But okay, cool. So I'll cut a three inch for that. As we continue with the second part of our two and a half year review, most of our steam frames are in place, so Arabella was ready for her floor timbers. We decided to go with bronze, which meant that first, Steve would need to brush up on his welding skills. So this is saying 045, we should be running 22 to 28 volts and 100 to 250 amps. Use the low side range for iron or nickel based alloys, middle range for bronze alloys, high side for copper. Okay, solid wires. Aluminum is two, four to six is stainless steel. So, yeah. so I was hearing at like 301 for wire speed. It took a bit to dial into working with the bronze, but soon enough, we felt we were ready to start tackling the first of the floors. I think we're gonna kinda have to just... I think we're gonna have to just make one. Pony up and cut it, yeah. yeah. We built this press to help us shape the wings of each floor to match the curve of the frame they'll be supporting. Like one. For our first attempt at bending something to a shape, I'll take it. As Grandpappy would say, it's within spitting distance. Jacob, who began visiting early last spring, was a huge help in figuring out all of the metal work. finished taking Victoria apart, saving whatever we could to later incorporate into Arabella. <laughs> it's pretty crazy, huh? Yeah, this is wild. They go apart a lot faster than they go together. Yes, they do. The more we took Vicky apart, we found disintegrated fasteners, rotted and iron sick wood and timbers, and generations of quick fixes that somehow kept her afloat. We learned a lot about how we wanted to avoid some of the problems that Victoria accumulated over her time on the water.
area. All right, leave that one. We were coming along with the floors, but bending the wings was taking much longer than we had hoped. So we made a smaller press that I could work on my own while Steve kept moving ahead on other work. You ready to go sailing? You want us to hurry up and finish the boat? You ready for some adventures? What do you think? Yeah, you're not sure? I think it'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> After we completed the stern bronze floors, we could move on to making the engine beds, and we had pulled some locusts out of the woods with this in mind. Dude, that looks, that looks awesome. I think that'll hold the engine. I think that'll hold the engine. Yeah, by the time we put the extra brackets in, but yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. We cut out the sole beams that will later support the interior spaces of the boat. And with those and the engine beds figured out, we tacked on all the rest of the needed tabs for each of the bronze floors before bringing them all out to the garage to get finished up. It was so much work getting these floors done, but we were really happy with the results and looked forward to showing them off at our third open house last May. We used this sandblaster to put the final finish on the floors before we installed them.
drilled our keel bolts going through the keel timber and about halfway through the lead ballast. Then we carved out pockets that met up with the bolts. This Bridgeport milling machine and metal lathe found a home in our garage this summer. Our friend Andrew helped us to get these moved and he took Victoria's Perkins engine to use for Rosalind, the 1903 St. Ives lugger he's restoring. Come on, Andrew. <laughs> It was finally time to start the process of planking, and we got everything prepared for the garboard planks. We built a planking bench and a scarfing jig, and with that ready, we were all set to start picking out material for the first garboard. Before we attach the garboard plank, we put in what we called stop waters. These will keep water from traveling through certain points where our timbers come together. We also put in this bronze hull strapping. The diagonal arrangement will strengthen Arabella's hull and we hope that it will keep her sailing for a very long time. At this point, we had been working on Arabella for about three and a half years, and we hadn't really taken any time off. So we got out our climbing gear and headed to the mountains for a bit to try and recharge. Yeah, this is a really fun route. 
what about taking this tailgate off? Do you think that'll make it easier? No, I would probably just... And when we got back, Arabella's diesel was delivered, and we hauled it upstairs until we're ready to set it in the boat. Ready? One, two, three. We made some sawn frames to go in the bow and the stern where there wasn't enough room to steam bend like the others. We got our cedar out of the garage and set them up on a rack out front so they could finish seasoning through the winter. Joe got the bridgeport and metal lathe working again, and we started work on our prop shaft assembly. Then, we had two scarf joints and graving pieces fail on us, which set us back quite a bit. But we tested out some epoxies <laughs> and built three warming boxes to keep the joints at the right temperature while they cured outside through a winter in the northeast. Arabella is not the boat most first-time builders would jump into. But jump in we did, and we've tried very hard to do everything the right way, even if it takes a while. Sometimes this can feel like an enormous amount of work, and sometimes it doesn't look like it on video. But there's no fast forward or time lapse here in the boathouse. We always knew a dream like this wasn't going to come easy or quick, but just like you, we can't wait to see where we go from here.